So let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the hiking, the hiking Alleghenies, Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. I remember he said that. But not only that, but from Stone Mountain in Georgia, from Lookout Mountain in Tennessee, from every hill and mole hill, I think he said, in Mississippi. I think Dr. King's message is important in today's world more than ever. Um, with things going on in the political world, with, um, with um, quotes that have been made against poorer countries than ours. Um, I always go back to I have a dream. And it all starts out with a dream, a vision, and then a dream, and then you can make it reality. And every race has to come together. This isn't about the African-American race or the Latino race. It's about all of us coming together. And Dr. King put it perfect when he said, when little, I can't quote him exactly, but he says, black children and white children will play and live in, har in harmony. And that's going to be a beautiful day. He said, I had a dream that people won't be like, um, that people won't be like me to each other. They call people black and white. Because if you call them by black, because you're, you're all the same color as them. I would say that Martin was, Martin Luther King was brave enough to make people get alone and stuff. I think Dr. King's message, um, you know, just tells us that. We are all equal, and we need to work to make sure that that is shown in our everyday lives. Uh, nobody is less than me, and nobody is greater than me. You know, none of the the folks that need a hand are, are you know, they they uh, might have been born into circumstances, but that doesn't change their value as a human being. Those that live in a in a tower somewhere aren't any better than any of us either, and. Uh, um, However, some of us were born into different circumstances, and it's up to the rest of us to try and work to uh, put everybody on a level playing field. We need to continue his work by being st sticking together and being in unity together and not being separated from each other. We need to come together as one, as peoples. Martin Luther King is forever going to be remembered because he made such a, posi a positive difference in society, and he was willing to give up his, his life for what he believed in. I think we can continue it by all getting together and meeting with different uh, people from all different backgrounds um, and hear the different opinions about um, problems and um, problems in today's society and we can all work together to make a positive difference just as do, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King did. I don't know. People get shot at, stabbed out here, he need to talk to them, talk to little kids, young kids, about don't fight it in York. People be nice to each other, people not doing bad stuff, and People, it don't matter what skin color you like, wearing, wearing and stuff. So, and he wanted to see if if you get along, and if you don't start fighting or have no drama. That's what he wanted to see you from York, Pennsylvania. I think a lot of people have sanitized Dr. King's message and said that he is all about peace and, and love, but Dr. King was about peace and love and agitating to make sure that that peace and love was being practiced for everyone. And what the marginalized community is, what the people being attacked, that changes over time and, and with whatever's going on in the world. But there are still so many groups of people that are excluded from the American dream. And to me, the core of Dr. King's message is that the American dream, the human dream of human rights, of safety for all people, that belongs to all people. 
It doesn't matter your race or your religion or your color or your ability. We need to have poverty eliminated. We need to have racism eliminated. And we need to have a military government that stops people from being able to have freedom of expression um, eliminated. Our leaders are here to help us, not to keep us in line. That's something we need now more than ever. Even today, still, we have slight, I want to say, like, quote unquote, segregation between people. Not exactly physically, but like mentally, people still think about racial differences or even difference in gender in today's society. And his message if we remember that daily, it would be very important in today's society. We can continue his work by understanding who he is, what the message was about, and just promoting healthy and wellness throughout our community. I would like to see unity um, in light of this new uh, Congress um, there seems to have been some division, but I believe that each and every one of us has to take a stand for ourselves. You know, I can't think like the masses. I need to think independently and remember doc Dr. Martin Luther King and what he said and what he did. You know, uh, a cold heart can be changed, you know, with love. They should get out, enjoy themselves, help other people. Like he did. I mean, you can't you can't sit at home all the time, just laying back like oh, there ain't nothing else to do in this world. But there is, there's plenty to do, and people just realize what's out there. We can continue his work today by letting people know about the differences in people, and celebrating those differences instead of discriminating against people. His message is important because we need to learn or know about our past before we can move on into our future because things do repeat itself. History can repeat itself, but he was such a strong leader in our community and for the African Americans and for all people actually just for unity and getting together and spreading that positive message without violence. We have to keep teaching our children about all people having the spirit of God in them. And we have to keep speaking up. It's so easy to want to stand back and stand down and say, well, we all need to get along. And so that means to be passive. It doesn't. It means speaking up against injustice. It means being willing to fight for what you believe is right, even if you have to stand up against your own government or your own police force or your own community or your own friends and neighbors and people. You know in your heart what's right and caring for others is what that is. And that's not always going to be an easy path. But if love guides you, love will lead you to take some pretty strong actions in protection of people that are being hurt. Trying to put race or gender more to the back of our minds and putting different things forward, like just putting um, what they're like or what they're interested in, anything other than what we see on the outside. Be more welcoming to <clears throat> our neighbors in the city and just try and learn where they're coming from. Try and get to know them better and don't just judge them by what we see. I will tell you as the new mayor, we are going to um, redo something that happened back in 1970. In 1970, right after uh, Dr. King was murdered, um, there was some violence here in the city. And, uh, but out of that came something called the York Charette. And during the York Charette, people, African Americans, young people, older people, uh, older white businessmen, you know, people, they all got in a room together. And for the first time that I know of, everybody was talking across the table to each other, you know, actually working together. 
and uh, there was some honest evaluation of where we were at the time, and people got together and made plans on how to make it better. Out of that came things like uh, Family First Health and the York Housing Council. So what we are going to do uh, coming up this summer is we're going to have a follow-up uh, 48 years later. We're going to look back and see what we said as a community that we were going to do to improve conditions for everyone in this city. We're going to evaluate what we've accomplished, see what we said we were going to do and haven't yet accomplished, and uh, then we're going to also see what more we have to do now. Um, so that is how I see continuing the work, really on the ground, in an organized fashion, saying what haven't we done yet and how are we going to do it. Well, the changes that I, I would really like to see in York will be that we need to have more freedom, we need to have more jobs, we need to have more people, um, all homeless all people off the streets and live in unity and have people to help each other out here as as the homeless people's out here struggling. And I think his word would be that we need to come at together as one in a unity to help the homeless and to help each other. As I said, all working together. And also, we need to take action steps instead of just not only talking about it, but to make steps towards it. There's vast inequality still here in York. The difference in education between rich and poor, the difference in safe housing between rich and poor, or even middle class and poor, is so profound and so visible in York. The difference in resources between city and county, we need equity in those resources. And we can talk to our politicians, we can volunteer in our schools, we can try to talk to our city council and have laws and regulations change. We can work through churches or other nonprofits. York has a record number of nonprofits and community-based organizations. We can make sure that resources get to those who need them efficiently. And we can communicate better to make sure that that information is shared. Just letting people know what the resources are that are out there is a huge thing. There's so much help here. There's so many great programs. There's so many opportunities for kids. And people just don't know about them. Not everything can be shared on the internet or on Facebook. We need to actually go face to face, have conversations and relationships with people, and tell them this is where you can get help so that you can have a better shot at equality and happiness. And one day I hope we get there, but the world is ruled by old people, but the consequences are put on the young. Um, when the saying out of Baltimore when black lives matter, all lives matter. Homeless people, we're all equal. And on a daily, on a daily basis, I have to pray that I stop judging everyone around me and look at me in the mirror to see if I'm doing everything I can do to help Dr. Dream, Dr. King's dream come true. And I hope it really does come true. And with the help of God, anything's possible. And right now this country's having tough times it's with the political leaders. And we have to, we just have to all come together. And it starts with prayer. And as soon as when they start taking God out of schools and out of everyday life, praying before you eat dinner and just being thankful for the things you have, we need to, we just need to show more love in this world, more love and more understanding. And we shouldn't judge a book until the whole book is read. We just have to love one another. That was his speech. We need to be loving. We can't be in a hateful society. Kids grow up in school, and it always seems in school that there's one or two persons that is the outcast. Maybe it's the fat kid, maybe it's the spindly kid, maybe it's the kid who's gay, and often it's the black kid or the, or the oriental kid. And kids are cruel, and they can do that, but they learn that from their parents. 
it has to start, it has to change really from the, from the children. We have to teach our, teach our children the right way to deal with other people, people who are not like us. But we are so much more alike than we are different. So even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal.